Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I am here today with a flip. A book flip. Um, I can't remember how long ago the video came out, maybe a couple weeks, of uh, Franken paper that I had made over a year ago and then made new paper that was inspired by Le Cafe Craft. And I really liked it so much that I put the book together with the Coptic stitch and then this happened. <laughs> when I made it, I did not realize that it was going to get fat like this. So, okay, so before I do the flip, what I'm going to do, because this just drives me crazy, my book does not close all the way. Um, I'm going to take out the Coptic stitch that I did the first time around and try to use this, the salvage stuff from picking it apart, and then add this to it because this is this thing apart and try to reuse this because I only have this much left of the same color, which is a chocolate brown, which I, I really like the way it looks. So I'm going to pick this apart. Then when I have it re-sewn so it doesn't look so stinking fat, non-closable fat, <laughs> Then I will do the flip. So I'll be back in a little bit and then do the flip. Well, it's a little wobbly because I left it very loose because I still have more pages to fill in. But it it seems to be not quite as fat as it was. I don't think I'm ever going to get it to close completely. So I'm going to have to figure out another binding. I mean, not another, another way to kind of keep it closed. Okay, so the paper in here is the Franken papers that I made a year ago and then the new ones that were done recently. So I just, there is no rhyme or reason to what I did in this book. Well, there is kind of. There's magazines, um, painted papers. That's actually a real tea bag tag thing, you know, the from the Lipton Tea. Let me get this stuff out of here. I know there's shadows everywhere. I'm sorry this is late in the afternoon. Some of them I've left like this because I'm not sure what to do to them and I don't want to finish it just because I feel pressured to finish it right this minute. So if I see something then I'll pull the book down and then one day after I do more fussy cutting I'll whip it off the shelf and I'll go through the stuff I fussy cut and see if there's anything that kind of fits where I want it to. I wanted to kind of stick with the theme of green or a golden brown color on this page. And no, it has nothing to do with this side. I tried outlining my stuff with black marker. I really don't like the way it looks. For me, I don't like the way it looks. It looks great when other people do it. For some reason when I do it, it just looks clunky. This is a... Um, an ephemera piece. It was a big, huge ephemera piece. I made these little tiny envelopes right here from, I think these are made by Sizzix. They're little thinlets where you make the little miniature envelopes. Just this is something out of a magazine, magazine. And I filled these in. You think, you know, they pull out, but I glued them in because I noticed if I just left them every time I close and open, stuff would fly out. So I said, no oh, poo. Right. So this stuff kind of pertained to ink and pens and the, it has a kind of a black and white theme. And then a friend gave me a bunch of her tags, like chalkboard looking tags. And then I found this. This is an image. I didn't draw this and this didn't come on here. It's of a, uh, what do you call this brush here? It looks like this in real life. It's one of these stiffle, stiffle brushes, you know, that you use for, uh, shoot what's it called you know stuff you do on walls anyway <laughs> stipples and then uh, this is a pocket made out of coffee dyed paper and then I sewed um, some leftover little pieces of vellum I had strips of vellum and I sewed vellum on here so you could see the tag inside I did everything kind of like calendar related, calendar supply stuff, except for the birdhouse. The reason he's on here is because he kind of goes with this, the color. This one, um, 
Carla from Cage Fish gave me a great book a couple years ago of food you people eat, and it's according to the region where they live, and it's old time food that you know you don't see everywhere you go. So I took the I took the images off the pages and I made them all a pocket. All the ones that I liked, I made them into pockets. I have a nice big fat thick stack in a drawer. And then I thought, well, what I'll do is I want to put a napkin in there. Well, I couldn't find anything. I thought, well, poops. Let's put the nice forks and spoons in here. So this is a pocket. And yes, these are glued down. Some of them I outlined. Some of them I left the way they were because I found them after I'd already done all the other work. And then I tried to find pictures of barbecue food because this is barbecue sauce. Like it clearly says on this side. <laughs> this is... Uh, ma this is all magazine images. This was one image. This is another image, and I stuck. I glue this first, and then glue that on second. And I like the uh, rubber band ball, so I just put it on there. Like I said, some of it makes sense. I don't really care. This stuff was about yellows and things that looked old timeish, old timey. I backed one, two, three of the oh four. For the image in uh, leftover pieces of black cardstock, this is that sewn leftover paper strips that's made into the ruffle. This idea came from Natasha at Treasure Books. This is another one of those pockets that has the vellum. This is my a rubber stamp I have. These are just magazine Im images, and I was. And I'm still working on them, but I made bookmarks for the local library, and then I laminated them. And this is one of my um, watercolor pictures, and I made it into a bookmark. And I took a whole sheet of um, computer paper and stamped and wrote the word read as many times as I could and make it all look different. And then that's what's on the back of every one of the bookmarks I made for the library. So I like this bookmark. I set it aside because I really like this one, so I kept this one for me. This stuff is all about the colors of orange and fall. And on the other side is just, it's a mess. Oh, excuse me. This was all about pinks. And then I put the blue flower there because my friend made this and she did this. And I really like her stuff. And occasionally I go, I'm out of flowers. So while she's have it on a pain day on the couch. She make, makes them for me. I have the hiccups. Let me stop for a second and get a glass of water. Okay. Kind of hard to talk when you spend all your time hiccuping saying, excuse me. Anyway, so this is a napkin that I did on the back of a friend's uh, tags. I didn't want to cover up all her pretty stuff on the back. And there was nothing on this side that I remember. I think this was blank on this side. So I took a uh, napkin and covered it up with a napkin and then put purple on it. Just so happens that's her favorite color. Um, I made this tag, geez, I think probably in about 2016, 2017. But I learned how to tape. You know, I, I learned a trick about the paper clips. This one is not done the trick I learned, but this is just held on with a paper clip right now. And then I dyed the sheet, my, a sheet from the bed that I tried to fix and it didn't go well, so I decided to rip it up and use it. Um, I made this tag right here, and it was so funny because I thought it belonged to somebody else till I flipped it over on the other side and it had my name on it and said 2016. I was like, whoa, I made that? <gasps> Oh my. <laughs> this was gifted from a friend. And this the theme on this one was about time, clocks, locks, keys. And I did have this over there. And this is um, a bookmark from another YouTuber. Not a bookmark, a tag or whatever you call them. Her name's Corey. I will put her... Um, link down below to show you how to make these. This, uh, what's it? She does everything out of scraps. It's just, she's phenomenal. Alright, and then this is just an ephemera I had, and then I made these uh, pocketed tags 
from scraps that I had had key left over and I thought well let's do this I dyed the ribbon I did have this over here but I wanted something to put in this pocket so I decided I would just take it off of here and just I just slipped it inside the pocket so you can still see what's on there the little key and everything and this is all stuff that came from magazines except for these these came from the same person who gave me the the, the flower and the um, ba -ba -da -da, the tag in one of these other pockets. Well, I missed it. Son of a gun. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I know where it came from. Oh, right there. And this thing was about yellows and flowers. This was photographed in, you know, this is one of the ones that got scanned. I made this flower. I drew this and colored it myself, and I made it into a sticker, so it was nice. I just had to peel it off and plunk it down there. Um, this was, again, something that was scanned. No, no, this was cut from a magazine, and I took scrap yellow and put it behind it. This was a bookmark, and I went ahead and glued it down on here. This came from, I bought this ephemera years ago and made a bunch of them and put them in a paper clip and set them in my scrap box. This was just an angel and I decided not to do anything else to this page. As this one, this is a double spread and I haven't decided what I want to do with it so I don't want to put anything on there and then change my mind and have to glue over something. Same for this one. This came from the same person who sent me the other one that was on this side. I love these things. This one was about old stuff you might see at an um, antique store or, you know, one of those places where everybody has a stall and puts their antiques in it, like an antique mall type thing. This came from Prim's Magazine. I think some of this stuff was cut out of Prim's. This was a rubber stamp. Again, this kind of theme was kind of green, potted, growing things, plants. Um, you can't tell what this one's dedicated to, can you? <laughs> and again, this is one of those scrap tags. I happen to have um, little cups and saucer uh, paper, so I cut these out. And they were white, so I colored them. I drew flowers on it. Here's the tag. It was tied on the top here, but it keeps coming untied. And I said, ah, pfft. Let me just shove it in the pocket because, you know, in every one of these, you make a little pocket. These are glued and sewn. They're glued inside here, and I sewed around here because she had said she likes her sewed, so I thought, well, let me give it a try. I do like the way it looks. And there's a doily glued on here, a tea dye doily, too. I love the color green. I couldn't do a book without the green pages. Sorry. <laughs> couldn't help myself. <laughs> This is about bees, bees and um, lavender. This is another one of those food article. Uh, those came from the food book. It was about honeycomb, honeycombs, edible honeycomb, and I sewed and made it a pocket. And there is a pocket inside here. Let's put this in here. There is a pocket there, but I haven't decided what to put in it yet. But I did, I did glue this onto the background. So if I don't ever put anything in the pocket, at least I have something nice up there. This, this is finished. I'm not going to do anything else to this page. There's, um, I think these are all things that were cut out of magazines. This spread is dedicated to baking and to eggs. This were, these um, egg cards were from Graphics Fairy. I've had these many years and I don't use them very often, but it just so happened, I, I looked at these eggs and went, oh, I have egg card ephemera. Let me use these silly things. It's crazy. I'm not using them. So there's another one of those. It had a tag in it, and I didn't let it dry, and so it left purple on it. But it's okay. It works. So these two are done. This one has um, my little daisy flowers here. And it is an envelope made out of tea dyed paper. There's nothing in the envelope. 
This was uh, photo paper flowers, and this was just a random magazine frame piece of art that was cut out of a magazine, and I like that the theme here was kind of yellow. This one's done. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to this. I just like the old-time pots, and I found enough. This one, you think, is a whole pot, and this one is, like, glued on top of it. Not so. I laid this one down because I already glued this one on, and I thought, you know, I need something behind it. Oh, I don't want to peel it off. So I took a pot I had. I felt with my finger, ran it over where the bump was, and then took a pencil and drew over it, and then I cut around it and slid it right on top of it. So it makes it look like it's right behind this red pot. I think this page is finished. I don't want to put flowers or anything else on here. I just kind of like it the way it is. This one was about rabbits. This one was the moths. I had the flower on there first and then I had these, found these beautiful moths. I think these came from Birds and Blooms. I think that's where these came from. I can't remember. But I really like the moths. They're so colorful and they're just, they're really pretty. There's another moth. I don't know if I'll do anything else to these. For me, in my mind, they're finished. This one I made into a little vignette. This was a double paned window that looked out into someone's um, mountain top. And I thought, well, that would be really nice if there was a shelf underneath there and plants. So I took a piece of uh, scrapbook paper that looked like wooden planks and cut it and put it underneath this and then took out things that I had drawn, flower potted things I had drawn and made into stickers and just put stickers on there. These remind me of um, my friends. I won't tell you who's who, but... Um, this reminds me of the Four Musketeers there. <laughs> the Four Amigos. This one, I'm, I like it, but I think it has problems. There's too much dark down here anyway. Um, I tried to make this look like it was a clip from a clipboard, and this was the back of the clipboard. This was brown violins, and I think these are one of these is a viola. This one, I... This one might... No, this one was a violin. This one might be the viola. This one is about scrapbook stuff. I mean, um, scrap store stuff. These are pieces of scrapbook paper, magazine squares, and I made them look like they were like material samples that were hanging on decorators' walls. So I didn't glue them all the way down. This first set. One, two, they're sort of glued down because I was going to stop there and I thought, well, what am I going to do with all this empty space? So I thought, well, I'm going to add more. So then I just took four random pieces, kind of tacked the four together and then shoved them underneath one of these that went quite dry. And I thought, well, I might as well keep going. So here's four more that are shoved underneath one of these. So you can see where I put it under here. And they're just, they, they make, it, it looks like fabric, like random pieces of fabric. On a on a board they do stick up if you see right there this was about this big these big huge beautiful flowers and I'm not gonna do anything else to this one this one was about sewing and the featured piece of this was her she get, she's on a uh, notepad so okay, you can see all the lines on her so I cut her, fussy cut her out, and she looked like, you know, she wouldn't look so good on this side. So I put her on this side and kind of cut her straight off. She's missing one of her feet. And then I had some um, um, stamps. I like the old-time stamps of sewing things. So I stamped them all in black, and I cut them out. And then I found a pair of scissors at the last minute. This is a tag. It says, Handcrafted with Love. This is an envelope from, there was somebody who had a drawing on Pinterest that was nothing but buttons, and I did a whole sheet of paper, I think that's in my Etsy store, of nothing but buttons, and it's in black and white. Then I ran it off on tea dyed paper. And this is a cardboard button, and it's a faux envelope. This one was about the color red. Could you tell? <laughs> so I looked for things that were red. 
Man, I did, I'd forgotten that RC Cola was really called Royal Crown Cola. If you're from the South or the Eastern part of United, East, Southern Eastern part of the United States, a lot of people know that in the old days it was very popular to drink an RC Cola and a moon pie. If you don't know what a moon pie is, Google it. They're yummy. This one was about multicolors. So I had been dyeing strips of um, that sheet, so I had strips of the sheet and I put them on a safety pin and glued all that on there to make it look like, you know, again, fabric samples for a decorator. That's a spool of thread that came out of a, a quilting magazine. And these are, what are these? Where did I get these words? These are not stickers. These were cut from some kind of a, it was a sheet or something that had all these really cool words on it. I'm not sure if it's a Tim Holtz thing or not. The rest of them were just magazine pictures. And there's another one of those great cardboard type feeling. It's not a sticker, but it's very hefty. It's on heavier paper than just copy paper, but I really love these things. This one was the main focus for this was that bird. Then I decided the bird needed some blue assistance. The bird and the stamp needed some more blue. So then I went to my, um, I saved stamps, postage stamps off of people's mail. And so I found some things that had like yellow that would kind of coordinate with this and the blue for the rest of it. This is another one of those um, scrap tag type things. And it's got a pocket in it. And it just so happens there's a rabbit in there that I wanted to use somewhere and I could never figure out where to put him and I didn't want him to keep flopping out of the book where I would lose him so I just tucked him in here he has nothing to do with any of this and this is one of the hydrangeas that I drew and then I made it into a sticker more stuff I dyed and then it's just out of leftover scrapbook paper that was um, actually this is not I made this paper this is not scrapbook paper it's tea dyed paper that I stenciled then I sewed it with brown thread I have to tell you if you're going to sew over paper clips, instead of just ramming it through the sewing machine, you should do it very slowly. I broke four needles in two days trying to sew over big fat paper clips with a little skinny-eyed needle in it. does not go well. So if you're going to do this, have spares and go slowly. And there's, this one is about typewriters and postage and maps. And I found this great image of this ball, this... um globe. I really liked it. And then the old-fashioned keys and then a map and an old, um, this was ripped off of some, oh, something that was brown dyed. And there's a picture of a typewriter. So I liked how it looked old-timey. And then this is just the back of the book and a, a friend sent me a bunch of these beautiful flower, I don't know what you, they're not stickers, but they're great. And, um, this was on one of them, so I punched it out and, well, pulled it out and put it on here, glued it on. And there's the back. So there's my little book that was fatter. But now it's a little skinnier. It's lost some weight. Not a lot, but some. And it's very loosey-goosey. Because if I ever want to add more to it, then I'm going to have to figure out how to weave I might take some tea dyed fabric and weave it in here and then, you know, tie it across here, even though I really don't care for those kind of, you know, where it's wrapped up 50 times with the uh, dyed something. Um, I don't have patience for that. So I may put a little something in here and string it across here and just tie it on a bow there. Or I could glue some kind of a chain across here and that way it stays shut. So there is my book that was inspired by paper, an idea between my friend, um, Debbie Cork in the UK and from watching Le Cafe Crafts and the person who is the creator of Le Cafe Craft is um, Patricia and she inspired both of them together inspired the book and a lot of images and a lot of things in here were stuff that were given to me from friends my my good friends and I put together a book I still have some things I'd like to tweak on it, but I really enjoy doing it. Now I need to move on to something else or I'm going to get stuck here and <laughs> never move past making these books. See, I still have all my little egg cards out. <laughs> Here's my tag book. I went through this. I made this a long time ago. The pocket tag book. 
and uh, I learned how to do this from Carlet Cage Fish. And so every time I make a tag, I stick it in my tag book. And then when I need a tag, I come in here and I go through all these tags. Now there are some tags in here that I did not make that I saved because they were made by my friends. Like I did not make this one. This is gorgeous, but I did not make this. I did not make this one either. Who made this one? Is this? There's no name on it, but I think I know who made it. It's beautiful. Has shrinky dink charms. Isn't that cool? Just love it. Uh, what else? Oh, somebody made me a tag with my name on it and fall leaves. This was made October 27th of 2018. It's a magnet, but I prefer to use it in here as a tag. And then somebody made me this one. This one's very thick. It's got a lot of stuff on it. This one's made by Peg Robinson. It's a little too thick to put in that little book. <laughs> so I keep it in here. And this one is really thick. This one is uh, made by Cindy Utter. And it looks like press board. And that's burned in there. So that's a beast. <laughs> and I think the rest of these are empty. Anyway, so when I need a tag, I... I come in here. Oh yeah, and I keep tags inside the ends in, in these little bitty ones too. There's little bitty tags inside these. Now where's the other ones? I have two little pink ones I put in here at back. There they are. Those cute. So this was a great book, a great way to store tags. I've made a ton of these books. Super, super easy way to use up scrapbook paper I really didn't care about having hang around. Anyway, my video is too long. <laughs> I got to go, y'all. I will see you guys next time. Thank you all for watching my videos. And I love that you guys leave comments. I try to answer every comment, sometimes in a timely manner, sometimes not so timely because uh, either I don't get notification or I get notification, delete it, think I'm going to go back and answer it and then forget it's there. And then it's like two months later and go, oh, 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 look, there's an, oh my goodness, I didn't answer that. So it's not that I'm, not answering them. Sometimes I get a little scatterbrained and forget. But I do try to answer or at least give you a heart or a like or some kind of a little acknowledgement that I read your um, comments. So I do appreciate them. Sometimes they're really funny. Sometimes they just say you did a good job. Sometimes they give me good ideas, which I really appreciate because that helps me not have to burn out the last two brain cells I have less coming up with new stuff. So... I have more videos. I have another video in mind for the week after this one comes out to make something totally different than this, but I do love doing this. And my Coptic stitch is really loose on this, and I did it that way on purpose. So um, I like them tighter than this, but I think my lesson learned from this one is I should not, knowing that I was going to glue stuff in here, I should have made each one of these a signature onto itself. That way, I think maybe it wouldn't have been quite so fat. Nevertheless, I do like my book. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.